good, depending on the economic, uh, depending on the economy, we have more social provisions or less, more jobs or, or, or less, but I think it's a place where, at least before the 2007 financial crisis, combined very well, providing people with jobs so they feel at home and they could pay the rent and, and make ends meet, and some social provisions as residents of cities in Catalonia. So again, another thing uh, that the U.S. can follow so that immigrants feel belonging. So belonging, based on my interviews, was very low, with, uh, particularly in North Africa, for people from North African origin living in Paris, but it was high among Latinos in New York City, although they were struggling a lot to make ends meet and make ends meet and have a, a good life for their families. And it was also very high uh, in Barcelona for the reasons that we have discussed, healthcare, etc. And then we compare, right? So Mexicans in New York, they feel they can speak Spanish, eat tacos, play soccer, etc., 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 but they have very little legal rights, right? They can be deported with mixed status families. Etc. And North Africans have a very good social protection. Most of them are citizens. Most of them are regular, but they have very few cultural rights, as, particularly as Muslims, caused by the state policy. Uh, Latinos in Barcelona feel uh, very well integrated. They have jobs. They have uh, some regulations in the law that help them to become citizens faster than, for example, Moroccans. But they still feel a little bit of tension um, uh, with, with the cultural. Adaptation that they still have to do to live in Catalonia or in Spain. And North Africans in Barcelona, they put the share on, they feel Catalans really bad because they're expecting a lot of uh, discrimination in Spain, in Barcelona, but actually they, they, they report racism, but they also report a lot of interaction, a lot of friendships, a lot of dating, a lot of playing, working together with people from different groups, and that makes a big difference for them to feel belonging. And their kids like Catalan and they feel and do very well. So the best outcome would be like, when you have very good subjective integration and very good objective integration, and no city is perfect, but uh, Barcelona is up there, and it depends who you are and how that is felt, the intersectional lens that is here was talking about. I would say um, legislation, uh, uh, some responsibility uh, to pay, uh, and then from this point of view, um, uh, urban planning uh, is something that uh, sometimes are left aside in the university uh, debate that are become very important. Mm -hmm. And learn about seven presentations of research related to immigration and integration uh, conducted by um, Research, uh, researchers and uh, students from American University, members of the Immigration Lab. And topics include um, different, different kinds of topics, you know, the, the, um, the presence of Central American minors in our region, Afghan immigrants in our region who are trying to integrate themselves here, uh, disabilities among immigrant communities, border communities, and other, topics, uh, and other topics that are very important and, and, and informative. Um, this is a special, special and unique opportunity for the researchers and for the students of American University that are members of the Immigration Lab to share with you their research, their findings, and uh, most important, the contribution and the impact that this research and finance can have in public policy. Um, so yes, my presentation is about disability among Amer Mexican Americans in El Paso. This is actually a team effort with Jess Jessica Chekhov, Bulin Lee, myself, and Ernesto's assistants. So our population demographic consisted of 60% male, 39.3% female, with 77% of our uh, population being citizens, and 22.9, so about 23%. Summer. My name is Melvin Sarabia in this presentation. So, just to start off, I want to talk about why we should care in the first place about Central American youth. And the so, biases against linguistics and cultural differences is what I got from these quotations. we were finding under the topic of relationships between youth minors from Central America and their sponsors.
name is Joshua Dietz. I'm a second year student in the uh, SOAR program, Sociology, Research, and Practice. Uh, I know we're tight on time here, so I will try to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, this is a project I'm working on um, in collaboration with a peer of mine, uh, Wu Lin Lee. Um, she's been doing a lot of the research um, and analysis on some of these trends within China while I've been focusing uh, primarily on the, these immigration patterns in the U.S. We do have some general understanding of the experiences of Afghans. I am a South American Afghan, a recent Afghan immigrant. Uh, and, and they can establish a number of hypotheses that need to be tested, uh, you know, uh, to get the uh, scientific credentials. Uh, so, a uh, number of things. So, one thing is that uh, there are a number of several actually settlement organizations around this area that are helping out the immigrants with their resettlement, even with their employment. But when it comes to the employment, they can only employ them or help them get employed in the uh, uh, law skill jobs and uh, career positions. For example, they have contacts with uh, Amazon. I am a former member of the Immigration Lab and current collaborator. I graduated in 2021. Uh, from the sociology research program at AU. Um, and the book really came about after the kind of chaos of the 2016 presidential U.S. election. This is about the Central American youth integration in the U.S. based on the same studies that Melvin and uh, Carissa's presentations were on. Um, I have a, obviously a much longer version, I guess, like everyone else does too, right? But um, so I'll be kind of going quickly um, over these things and just kind of covering some broader themes. Um, so for Dr. Castaneda and I have been working on a book that will be out um, hopefully early uh, 2023, the history of trauma, and also cultural changes in schools as the demographics of those schools change kind of rapidly sometimes. 